Hi, my name is Spencer Weston. I work at me to we and this interview interview is for JM and Paige, and this is for Miss uh, Vite's twelve, uh, grade twelve religion class. So, me to we is two things. The first is it's a philosophy of thinking less about ourselves and more about the people around us, but also it's how through our daily actions and the things that we purchase and the things that we fill our minds with, how that can affect the world around us as well. So we offer a bunch of socially conscious products like um, me to style t-shirts, which are child labor free, environmentally friendly. Um, we offer a variety of, of books, um, music, um, we have uh, leadership uh, workshops that we do, we have motivational speaking tours and motivational speakers and those sort of things. Um, so that's me to specifically to provide uh, people and youth um, with socially conscious products. But on top of that, me is also a social enterprise which supports free the children. Um, so 50% of our annual proceeds from me to we goes to offset the administration costs for free the children. Um, so that way more proceeds go specifically to the project and not to administration. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know, um, the organization was started by Craig Kilberger, who at um, the age of 12 read a newspaper article about a child laborer named Iqbal Nassim, who had been murdered uh, for speaking out about child labor. And after hearing or, or reading this article, Craig wanted to do something, so he went to his grade seven class and he read the article to his class and he said, look, I, I don't know what child labor is, but I know that it's wrong and we need to do something about it. And so that's how Free the Children was formed. Um, 11 students raised their hand after Craig said that, and 12 students originally started Free the Children, which is now the largest network of children helping children for education. And um, so that's what we were originally founded on, was to help end child labor all around the world. So at the core, that's been our main focus, as well as uh, free youth here in North America from the idea that they are powerless to make change, um, which is obviously not the case, which I'm sure you guys know already. So, so child labor is our, is our huge focus, and that's where everything came from, and we really focus on education and helping to, through education, we're hoping to not only end the cycle of poverty, but help end child labor, as well as through me to me with our socially conscious uh, products as well. So we have, we have a couple of campaigns that we do for Me2Me, the, the first one, and this is actually through Free the Children, the, the charity side, but me we supports that. Um, but through Free the Children specifically, we have what we call Adopt a Village. And adopt a Village is our whole, our um, the grassroots holistic um, development model. So there's there's four pillars, we provide education, um, clean water, and sanitation, um, healthcare, and also alternative income. So um, the two that I think really focus on child labor specifically is number one, education. So we have youth groups all around the world who um, fundraise and help uh, build schools. Build schools in countries like Ecuador, uh, China, India, Sierra Leone, Sri Lanka, uh, Kenya. Um, so it. Um, and so we help provide schools for our first students to go to schools to get an education. So hopefully instead of working, they're able to come to school instead. But the second thing that we do is um, alternative income. So by fundraising through, again, through this adopt village program, um, we provide communities with alternative income sources. Uh, for instance, in Kenya, we do like uh, 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 beehives. So uh, families are able to create honey that sell at the local market, so their children don't have to stay home and work and help their family out. That way, they can go to school, and this way the beehives and the money that's collected from that is uh, provided to the family so then their students can go to school, which is the same. In India, we have um, these, these huge uh, plants, which actually maybe you guys can take a picture of before you leave. Um, it's this huge, basically, dehydration station where they dry ginger. And then the families can sell the ginger to the local markets and provide uh, income for their families and their students can go to school instead, instead of staying home. But we also do a lot of other things like providing with livestock and different skills, um, like sewing and uh, bead making and that sort of stuff. To do that as well. So those are sort of the two big main focuses that we do. But we also have another campaign which can be used towards child labor as well, which is um, called the Vow of Silence, which we're actually doing on November 20th, where you stay silent for the entire day. No texting, no talking, no Twitter, no Facebook, no MySpace, no contact for the whole day, which I know can be can be difficult, but the teachers love this because nobody's talking all day. Um, but you raise awareness, and if you want pledges, 
for all the missing voices around the world, for all the, the, the 218 million child laborers that are still working right now as we speak, but also for other other children in, in poverty and, and social issues. So, so some simple things that you can do is just be conscious of the products that you're buying and where they're coming from. Um, uh, I think a, a really cool activity that, that you guys could do, and I don't know if you guys want to edit this out or if you want to do it, but a really cool activity that you guys could do in the class is to have everybody check their tags on their t-shirts and ask them where they were purchased. And, and, and it'll see, yeah, so you can even check your uniforms and see like where, what they say, like where they were made, where they made in China, where they made in Bangladesh, where they made in India. Where that shirt come from, um, and so then they can see just even by the t-shirt that they bought, they could be promoting child labor, which I don't want to obviously promote that in, in your school, but, but that, that's something that, they, that that's an activity you can do with this specific. Yeah, but but then what's important too is to make sure that they don't feel guilty about that and that they have options to do that. So the option that I would recommend then um, is to uh, purchase uh, fair trade products, purchase. Um, Things like B2B style or uh, I, like American Apparel. It's, it's child labor free. Research and find companies that are child labor free. Um, that's one easy way. So, just by the, the conscious effort of what you're purchasing and where you come from, that's another really easy way. But I think the easiest, which is really awesome, is what you guys are doing is just raising awareness. So, researching and finding out what child labor actually is, where, where it's happening, who it's affecting, and that sort of thing. And that's the, the very bottom. That would be the first thing to do is to raise awareness. And then come up with small action that you can do specifically with this purchasing. A big question. Um, I think our hope is that eventually we can do that, but we need everybody's help to do that. So we need really we need people to start being aware, like I said earlier, of, of the things that you're purchasing and how that affects people overseas, but also ways that you can contribute to to stopping to, to end that. I mean that's always the end goal is to end poverty and to end child labor specifically. Um, I think if we can mobilize everybody and everybody can come together eventually, yes, we, we definitely can. We definitely can do that. Um, and I believe through our small actions every single day we, we have the power to do that, but we need everybody's help. Um, so is it possible? Yes. Is it going to be possible in a year? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. But uh, I think if we each start uh, taking responsibility for the things that um, we do in our daily interactions, I think that can definitely make a huge difference into helping end child labor. And just, just like I mentioned earlier, really get, getting involved with Adopt a Village and help providing alternative income or a school or even doing the vow of silence to, to raise awareness for these things can definitely.